What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of A Down Once More. Matt here, and this week we are doing another recap of House of the Dragon, episode uh, three of season two aired, and then going to talk about some musical recommendations uh, for the 4th of July, which is tomorrow, if you're watching this as it comes out or listening, um, and then some other musical news. So, I'm going to stop saying when the episode of Brad and I uh, talking about Wish, when that review is going to come out, um, just technical difficulties and everything has been an issue, but he's getting a new router and modem today, so hopefully that will be sometime soon in the future. Stay tuned on social media and just watch and listen as always. Uh, I also think I am going to keep doing the House of the Dragon recaps. They just won't be coming out the night of it. If it's a week that Brad and I do a joint episode when an episode airs, you'll get a bonus episode drop. That's the recap from House of the Dragon. So let's get into the recap of episode three of season two of House of the Dragon, The Burning Mill. Uh, As always, there will be some spoilers in here. I'm going to recap the episode. So be warned. Uh, This episode opens with two families, the Brackens and the Blackwoods kind of disputing over their lands. Uh, It's families we haven't met before, but it's showing how the people in the kingdom are kind of reacting and what's going on with the Rhaenyra Aegon um, dispute and split. They're arguing over land, the Bracken because the Blackwood, a babe killer because of Rhaenyra killing Jaehaerys, and then the Blackwood comes back and says, hey, Aegon's no true king, um, and you're no true knight, and they're both, this, we're getting early in the episode, we're going to drop it, um, he calls them both it's craven little cunts, it's fun, we got some Game of Thrones dialogue uh, going on, great insult there, um, so then we get what is one of the most upsetting things of this episode, it cuts to the aftermath of a bloody battle. Um, with the Bracken that had been insulting, just dead, laying there covered in blood. And you just see this aftermath, the mill's on fire, um, and there's hundreds of bodies just strewn about dead. Um, And then that's it. We don't get to see the big battle. The episode is called The Burning Mill. We do not get to see that battle of The Burning Mill, which, kind of a tease, kind of fucked up, House of the Dragon. Um, Then, though... We jump to Rhaenyra as they're burying Eric and Eric together uh, and just having some dialogue about that. Rhaenyra's still just frustrated, upset that they've and angry that now they are coming after her in her home again um, after Jaehaerys. Renice is there kind of trying to talk Rhaenyra off the ledge a little bit and just kind of pitching to her to try to convince Alicent to parlay, to make peace. Like, neither one of you want your families, want all this bloodshed. And saying that, like, a war, a battle between dragons is the bloodiest of all. So, like, basically, you are going to, thousands are going to die. The realm is going to be in chaos. There's just going to be so much bloodshed. It's not worth it. Renice is trying to talk her off the ledge a little bit. Renair is like, hey, Alicent is there in King's Landing. She permitted all all of this to happen. She permitted the Lu- Luceris, um, Luke's death at the end of season one. And she now permitted this, like Eric coming here. And Re- Renice is kind of like, yo, you're saying that she permitted this. That means that you permitted your Harris's. You permitted the murder of a child in his bed. So be careful what you're saying. Just cause she's there doesn't mean she permitted it. Um, I think it kind of clicks with Rhaenyra a little bit um, because Rhaenyra had mentioned that she had gotten a letter from Alicent, but she hadn't looked at it. She wasn't going to. And that's when kind of Renice is like, hey, yo, do this. Look at this. You're saying you're queen. Think of what's good and what the what's best for the realm. Um, Then after that, we cut to King's Landing, we cut to the High Council meeting. Sir Kristen Cole is kind of just in his tower, and you see him just kind of in his own zone. I'm not sure if that's just trying to give some insight of him hearing about his sending Eric off basically to his death, um, basically when he was like a spoiled child and just trying to lash out because he's having guilt because he was with Allison when Jay Harris gets murdered. Um, we see Cole go into the High Council. You can tell he's not as comfortable. It's not what he's for like he's a warrior he's well he's an impatient just kind of spoiled man child but 
he doesn't belong in the high council, let alone his hand of the king advising the king. Um, and I think part of that's because Aegon just wants uh, someone who is a warrior and who can battle, could just kind of flex their muscle. He doesn't want anyone that can really challenge him too much because um, Aegon is very impatient and rash as well. And so Aemon is sitting there at the high council and he mentions about the Brackens that they took it upon themselves to attack the Blackwoods um, and that Samuel Blackwood himself is dead and that war is already upon them. And when they're trying to debate at the next steps, he's like, it's already here. We already have people in the Riverlands fighting the two largest houses with the most swords in the Riverlands fighting against each other because of the Aegon versus Rhaenyra um, thing. And then Alicent and Cole just get into it because Cole saying, yep, we need to march off. We need to take Heron Hall. We need to take the Riverlands. We need those swords by our side. Now, since like, we're not ready yet. You go off. Everyone's going to die. We're going to have so many casualties. Wait till you can muster your swords, rally your men, um, muster your forces before you attack. And Cole's not really having any of that. He's like, nope, time to act is now. We're going to go off and attack. And Aegon's like, hell yeah. And I'm going to ride out on Sunfire. Um, his dragon. And everyone's like, whoa, 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 king. We know you're warrior battle, but let's not do that. Um, because Cole had said he's taken Amund with him, but Amund is leaving Vagar. That, yo, dragon, not going with you. Um, they're saying that, hey, we don't want to draw more attention than we need to. If we bring a dragon with us, it's going to provoke another dragon to come out and battle with us. We just want to go as men, march, fight, take it. Um, and if a dragon pops up, we'll deal with that when it comes up. Go back to Rhaenyra. Miss Syria is there approaching her, and we do get the more explicit heads up like, hey, Miss Syria is the one warned everyone about Eric coming to take, pretend to be Eric and kill Rhaenyra. Not confusing at all. Um, and it, she's like, they didn't believe me at first when I told them, but then they finally did. It saved Rhaenyra's life. And Miss Syria says that. What she wants is a place in Rhaenyra's court. Um, she said, I can help you. I know the workings of the Red Keep. I know what's going on there. I want a place in your court um, because I believe you and saw that you will show mercy. So I've seen two options. You're the only one that I've seen that will show mercy. Um, and Rhaenyra just gives her a little bit of a warning and says, hey, don't confu confuse my mercy with pliancy. Like, I'm not going to be manipulated. I'm not just controlled by my feelings and my mercy. I let you live. That's where we're at. And then Rhaenyra is talking to Reyna, who is Damon's other daughter that he had with Lana Valerian. Uh, Bela is the one that we talked about last episode that Rhaenyra's like, hey, I need you to go keep an eye on King's Landing with your dragon. And she, um, Rhaenyra is talking to Reyna. Reyna does not have a dragon. And she's saying that she needs Reyna to take her son. So there's Joffrey that she had with Lanor. Well, Lanor, um, cause there was that whole thing that they're actually all Harwin Strong's bastards. Um, Lanor, she didn't actually have any sons with, um, because he was into his knight. Um, and then, she also has Viserys and Aegon. We got another Aegon. Aegon the baby, who, um, who are her two children with Daemon, who are still very young. Um, and she wants Reyna to take them to Lady Jane Aaron in the Vale. Uh, and then after the Vale said, you need to just continue on to Pentos, because even the Vale isn't safe. But I need you to go and help basically be the mother to them that I can't right now. You need to go raise them and help keep them safe. Um, Reyna's a little like taken aback and feels like the reason you're sending me away is because I don't have a dragon. You're keeping Bela here because she has a dragon to help you fight. But me, I'm just getting sent off basically in exile to watch the kids, to play nanny and play mother um, and feels just kind of invalidated. And all of this, like Renera is doing while Damon's gone. And so I could see Damon comes back, um, not being too happy that both of his daughters have been sent away. Rhaenyra's just like, hey, Bela, watch King's Landing. Reyna, go off across the sea, watch my kids. Um, after that, though, we cut to Damon and Caraxes landing. In, it's a stormy keep. 
find out it is Heron Hall. That's where Damon was headed off to. And it is like a ghost town. It's like he's walking through a haunted house. He's got a sword drawn. He's in his armor. He's waiting for a battle. He's kind of itching for a battle is the sense that I got. He's wanting to fight someone, especially with how he kind of left off in a huff. He wants someone to fight. He finally finds people, and there's like a max five people in a room. Uh, at the head of the table is Sir Simon Strong. Uh, Damon said he's coming to take Heron Hall. Sir Strong's like, well, apparently. Uh, and he instantly pledges fealty to Renera. Um, Damon says, well, how can we have your trust? Because sitting down, eating there, Damon's saying, could have poisoned it because you're. Um, one of your family members, Lara Strong, he serves in Aegon's court. And Simon Strong says, we do not recognize Laris Clubfoot as a strong. We suspect he killed his brother um, and his family just to get to the place he is. So, no, they do not have any respect for him. They side with him in Rhaenyra. Um, Damon's like, why is Hall in disrepair? Like, why? This is the largest keep, the longest stronghold here in the Riverlands. It should be the hub. Like, well, as you can see, it's in disrepair. It's destroyed. Everything's leaking. It's wet. No one's here. Um, the master of the Riverlands are the Tullys, but M Master Tully, whoever his name was that I didn't know, is basically senile now. He can't even control his bowels. Um, and so you can see Damon's like, well, we need to get all the swords to rally to us so that we can go off to war. And... Then we cut away from Harrenhal. We go back to King's Landing. We are introduced to Sir Gwen Hightower, Allison's brother. He shows up right as Cole, who just got an awful haircut. Like, even, we all hate Kristen Cole. He's been a douche canoe this season, right? And even last season. No one likes him, but at least he was kind of hot. And then he gets this awful choppy haircut. I get you got to put your helmet on more. Actually, I don't know what the fuck it is because people with long hair have helmets all the time in the series. But he gets his bad botch cup and he is there and Allison introduces Sir Gwen to Cole. Sir Gwen says he's going to ride out with Cole um, to go to the Riverlands uh, for the battle. Cole then asks for Allison's favor, which is the little hanky that she has in her bosom. And, um, she gives it to him because he said he wants to ride out with her blessings in his heart. And Allison does seem a little bit hesitant for a couple reasons. I think because of she's not agreeing with Cole's decision. She feels like it is impatient. She feels like he should not be hand of the king because he sent... I think she suspects that Cole had a role to play with Aegon sending away Otto, her father, from hand of the king. Which, as much as we don't really care for Otto, and he's a little bit of a conniving um, little bastard, that he is, we can agree that he is infinitely more suited as Hand of the King than Kristen Cole. Um, and Sir Gwaine's kind of eyeing all this with some suspicion. I think he has an inkling of what's going on between Allison and Cole. Um, and then they go and they ride out. Now we're back to Rhaenyra, where she's with her castle, uh, not castle, council, and she's getting counsel. They're like, hey, send out all your dragons. We need to start fighting and turning those green castles. We need to flip them to blacks, and we need to do that with the strength of our dragons. Rhaenyra's saying, we're just inviting our own destruction. We have these dragons start the fighting. They're going to send their dragons. All we're doing is kind of echoing some of what Rhaenys had said, like, this is going to be bloody. All we're going to do is send the realm into disarray and despair and not wanting to do that. Um, Jace, uh, Jacerus seems just kind of displeased with this. You can tell he is kind of itching for a fight and he wants revenge for his brother. He talked about last episode with Bela, how he misses Luke. Um, and he's just still dealing with that grief and he's just has this anger that he wants to kind of take out especially now that they attempted to kill Renera in her home um the the counselors are telling Renera they're like well yeah you have your dragons because Renera's like hey fear in and of itself is a weapon they're like well but um the strength of a sword isn't when it's in its scabbard you know take that fucker out and go to war um and their their suggestion is that we think this is not safe for you they made a attempt for your home maybe you should just hide away for your safety and we'll conduct the war here in your absence Renera 
little bit snaps and says, what you're basically suggesting is treason. You want me to hide away just so you can do what you want and run the war? No, be mindful of what you say. And she storms off. And Renice kind of comes up there and talks about Rhaenyra. She's like, she is from the bloodline of the longest and wisest Targaryen ruler. You would do well to remember that because you are putting yourselves in a risky spot, buddy. And I do like that Renice is playing this kind of, basically Rhaenyra's hand is the position that Renice is playing and just trying to counsel her and provide her wisdom as she's ruling. She wants her to succeed. And then we go though to Rhaenys is talking to Corlys, uh, Valerian, her husband, and they're kind of talking about who would be Corlys's heir if something were to happen to him because she senses that he's going to be called to battle soon. Um, they're saying, well, technically the heir would be Joffrey, uh, Rhaenyra's son with Laenor. And Corlys, he doesn't know anything of ships. He knows nothing about this. Rhaenys is advising that Rhaena is. She's like, Rhaena's about to be sent away. If you name her your heir, then she'd have to stay here. And Corlys is also saying she knows nothing of the creak of the ships or of dragons. She doesn't know any of that. She said, he doesn't feel like she deserves to be heir there either. And he said he'll survive. He survived many battles. He'll survive these again. Um... Then we go to when Reyna's actually getting ready to leave. She's watching everything get loaded. They're carrying the little dragons because Joffrey has a dragon that's bonded with him. And little baby Aegon has one as well. Where's the baby Viserys? One of the babies has a dragon as well. And then Reyna's getting talked to by Rhaenyra. She's like, hey, um, I understand you want to go. You were doing me. This basically saying you are doing one of the most important work. You are protecting our family. You are protecting the lineage and shows her she is sending her with four dragon eggs, one for her son that doesn't have one yet. Um, and then three others. And then it was revealed. The director of the episode said that those other three eggs that Rhaenyra sent are the eggs that become Daenerys's eggs in a Game of Thrones. So nice little nod there, some more information, um, and we're seeing that's going. And Rhaenyra also reminds um, Reyna, like, part of your duty there is to remind Lady Jane of her pledge and where her loyalty lies um, to me and not with the Greens. And so... Rena and Bela are kind of going back and forth because Rena feels like it is a displeasure. She's just being sent away. And Bela's telling her how it's her duty. She needs to be strong. And where those dragon eggs are going with her, she's protecting their future. Um, and remembers, and that's what Renera tells her as she sends her off, that things go wrong. You bear the hope for our future. That's all with you. If we all die here, everyone goes to war. You have these dragon eggs. You are securing the future. Um which is true, they're Danny's eggs, and so we all know how that turns. We're back in King's Landing, the Red Keep. Helena and Alicent are having a moment. Helena says she's feeling fat, sad about Jaehaerys' death. She feels like she couldn't. It's better that babes die when they're young. Well, babes die when they're younger all the time. And in the common folks, she could tell when they were surrounded by them in Jaehaerys' procession that they're seeing their young ones die much more recently, and they have more of a reason to grieve than she does. And Allison says, you have just as much claim to grief, grief as anyone. And Helena t then tells Allison, like, she forgives her. And Allison questions it because Helena's like, well, what about your grief? And she's like, it's something I'd bear. We each have as much claim to it, but I'm more worried about you, Helena, than that. Sorry, it's an alarm that it's about time to leave for work. So I got to wrap this up. Um, as much clean claim as anyone to that. And Helena just tells her she forgives Allison. And Allison's kind of taken aback. And I think it kind of revisits that guilt she has for being with Cole at that time. Um, Aegon's getting ready for war. He's putting on his armor, um, the armor of Aegon the Con Conqueror. He says he's ready to ride out into battle. Laris is just seeing that this is a foolish thing, but he is more a better way with words and is a little more calming. And Aegon, I think, trusts him a little more than he does Alicent and the other council. And so he plays it off as he's heard rumors that in the city that some people are saying that 
Aegon, in his wisdom and his strength, he's flying out with Cole to battle. But others are saying that Aegon allowed himself to be tricked by his counsel so that he flies into battle while Alicent rules with Aemon by her side, which I was kind of confused by because Cole and Aemon, Aemon's going with Cole. So um, I don't know if they're saying that because Aegon will die in battle or what, um, but he needs him to go off. Um, this kind of clicks him with Aegon. He cares about what the people think, even though he's still impetuous and does things kind of impulsively and in his rage. Um, he still cares what the people think, and he asks Laris to kind of tend to these weeds, these rumors, and that his father didn't see any value in it, but Aegon finds himself in needs of a master of whisperers and wants Laris to fill that role. Laris says he'll do so gladly. And then King's Guard, because there were ones that were replaced, ones that had died, um, and Sir Eric, they're kind of butting around with Aegon. They're the ones that have just been partying with him in the whorehouses and everything. And they're saying, hey, um, we got a new squire. He's never been with a woman. We're taking him to the whorehouses. You want to go with us? He's never been a woman. Aegon says, well, you're King's Guard. You're now sworn to chastity. And they're like, yeah, right. And then Aegon's just looking at him seriously still. And they're like, oh, yes, your grace. And then Aegon kind of, I think, kind of is realizing how others see him and seeing himself a little bit as a fraud and getting some of that introspective. Um, and then serious and concerned. We don't really know how that scene's going to end. And so then we cut to a tavern. And there was Ulf sitting at a table. We saw him. He was one of the ones who saw the rat catchers hanging from the walls first in the last episode. He's sitting at a table. He's like, yo, I'm Damon's half-brother, actually. I'm Balon's. He had a bastard. That's me. And now my nephews are over here doing this. Um, my nephew was killed. And my other nephew's on the throne now. And it's just a mess. And Ulf's talking like... He believes Aegon is a usurper, and he supports Rhaenyra's claim. And Daemon's, because Rhaenyra and Daemon still coupled, and so that's his, his half-brother's claim. Um, and then all of a sudden, Aegon walks in with the King's Guard, and he comes to attention. He's like, "All hail the King! All hail the King!" Just thinking of his own self-interest. Um, Aegon is obviously just like drunk and he's acting like his younger like impetuous self which we'd seen him kind of attempting to act kingsley these past few episodes so now you kind of see he's just revert reverting to his old ways of debauchery and just kind of collaborating with everyone there and drunk and not caring about anyone the concerns people had with him being king and after drinking in the tavern then he's going through the whorehouses he's pulling back curtains uh we get a monster fake dick getting um blow drop from a whore you get a nice view there that it sneaks on and then he pulls back a curtain as he's aiming curled up kind of in the fetal position like we saw in the last episode with the whore and Aegon just starts mocking him and making fun of him saying that oh he's still with the whore that's your first and you wouldn't sample another and um just He's just won't sample another whore. He's still hung up on his first. This is still where he goes and just kind of just constantly mocking him. And you can see just kind of that anger and frustration in Eamon's face. He gets off and storms off, says, your squire's welcome to her. One whore is worth just as much as of uh, worth just as much as another. Um, and I think we're maybe foreshadowing a little bit of a turn there. Um, and we cut to Renera playing with some trinkets that I believe were Viserys's, and she's kind of just has the sadness and kind of seems like reverting on memories. And maybe they were Luke's. I'm not sure. I didn't pick up on this if this was a callback to trinkets we'd seen in earlier season one. Like I said, I didn't get a rewatch in, so lo siento. Um, and then she pulls out Allison's message with her sealed seal and we see her open it looking to what she had said which the message we don't know exactly what's in it but it was alluded to earlier in the episodes that it was allison's letter to renair i think kind of pleading with her and apologizing for luke um saying that was not her intent and uh, then we cut to sir Gwain. he's riding across a field um Kristen cole comes and 
stops him and says, hey, we're all camped back there. And Sir Gawain's like, yeah, you're sleeping on the fucking ground. I'm not going to sleep on the ground. We're heading to the inn. There's food. There's drink. There's women. That's where we're going. Cole looks up and he spots a dragon up by the the moon. Not the moon. The sun. Um, and yells, there's a dragon. Then he make for the trees. They start sprinting. It's Bela up there on the, dra- on the dragon. And she spots them. And starts flying down low to survey them. Uh, thought maybe she was going to attack them. And just torch uh, them all. But they make it to the trees before she does. And they're staying um, calm underneath. And she's circling around trying to catch an eye for them. And then flies away. And goes to Renera. One thing I did like. we are getting a lot of camera shots from the dragon's back. So it looks like you're in the dragon rider's POV. And I've actually been enjoying that this season. We've gotten quite a few. We've gotten... Damon on Caraxes, and now we got Bela on, I forget her dragon's name. It's like Dreamfire or Moon Dancer. I think it's Moon Dancer, something like that. But um, then we cut to Bela reporting back to the council, and she said that she saw Sir Kristen Cole there. He was heading toward the Riverlands. He had all these knights, and they were moving there. Um, Rhaenyra's council is urging her again to loose the dragons, root Cole out, burn him. Uh, Rhaenyra says... I've heard all your arguments. I'll consider them. Goes off. Uh, then we go back to Damon and Heron Hall, and you see the roof's leaking. He feels like someone's pounding on the door trying to get in. He goes and kind of wanders off trying to explore it. And this is where we're really getting kind of like the first kind of supernatural and haunting uh, aspects of Heron Hall. Because he goes in a room and he sees young Renera. Um, which is kind of creepy that he's seeing young Rhaenyra, uh, but they always had like a special connection and bond. It was a little creepy. He sees her. She's sewing Jaehaerys' head back on that had been severed. Um, it is intense. And she's telling Damon she's always having to clean up after him. Um, Damon drops his sword. He's kind of taken aback a little bit there. Um, and then he wakes up from this just dream, nightmare, vision, and he's at the Godswood tree, and he's told by um, one of the Strongs, who is the, kind of also uh, learned she's the, the witch of Harrenhal, is what she becomes, and she's telling him that he will die in this place. Um, it's just kind of very horror movie-esque, that kind of vignette and this kind of posing of uh Damon and where he's at uh then we go back where Nera's talking to Miss Aria. she's getting some counsel she says she wants to know about the movements of Alicent Hightower because she doesn't want to kill her but she wants to see her face to face and she feels like if she can talk to her she can help kind of stem some of this bloodshed Miss Aria comes up with a plan sneak her into King's Landing they get in with some fishing boats they have her dressed up as the nun like the shame shame lady uh, from Game of Thrones um and she gets escorted to the sept. And we see Allison there praying, lighting candles. And Renera comes along her side, tells Allison she needs to speak to her, not to cry out. You cry out, I'll kill you, you'll kill me. Does no good. She's like, oh shit, I didn't really plan this out. When she's telling her what happens next, she's like, I don't really know, but we'd both die. Um, they're, she's just trying to console her and be like, you know um, Viserys' wishes. You know what happened. You and I both knew when we watched that turning when we were young girls, we saw that we saw that men trained in battle, they're eager to fight and seek blood and glory. We want peace for the realm. We don't want to just send it off into bloodshed. Um, and she said that Renice saw an Alicent and counseled her that she saw a way to avoid a fight and that she wants to seek peace. Um, Renera says she had nothing to do with Jaehaerys, though Alicent's kind of staying on that, says that everyone has now seen your depravity. They now know what you're capable of. People aren't going to follow you. They're not going to trust you because they've seen what you did to Jaehaerys. And it's like, yo, I didn't, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. I didn't do this. I would never do that to you. Um, and of course, Alicent doesn't really well, she seems like she believes her, but she's sticking on. She's like, Renera's like, I spoke to Viserys that night. He reaffirmed he wanted me to be queen. Now, since like Renera, he changed his mind. I was the last one to speak to him. He changed his mind. Renera's like, no, I don't believe you. And you, 
I don't believe that he changed his mind. Allison's like, Renera, I've never not been true to you. We have not seen eye to eye, but I've never been untrue. This is the truth. I am telling you, he changed his mind. Renera's kind of starting to accept that a little bit now. She's like, okay, well, did he speak of me at all? And Allison doesn't say anything. Her silence is saying more than the actual words. Renera, you can see kind of sadness washing over her face. She's like, well, what did he say? And Allison's like, he spoke of the prince that was promised. He spoke that Aegon was going to bring peace to the realm. And Rhaenyra kind of has a realization. She's like, the prince that was promised. This was a story about Aegon the Conqueror. A song of ice and spot fire. He told you about this. Allison doesn't really recognize what she's talking about. A song of ice and fire. She's like, I didn't hear the story. This is what he said on his deathbed. He was talking about Aegon was going to bring peace to the realm. He's the prince that was promised. And he's like, that was a story that he told. A song of ice and fire is what he had recounted. It was a prophecy um, that stemmed from like Aegon the Conqueror and all that. That's what's going on. Um, Allison says, you know what? You need to leave. So she kind of like has a realization like, fuck, I misunderstood what he meant, but she's digging in. She's like, Renner's like, Allison, there's been a mistake. Like I'm supposed to be queen. There was a misunderstanding. He wanted me to be queen. He reaffirmed that. And Allison said earlier, she's like, I even said you'd be a good queen. Like, I'm not saying you aren't, but this is what Viserys wanted. He changed his mind. He wanted Aegon. And Renner's like, See, like, it was a mistake. You misunderstood him. He was telling a story. He was delusional. He wasn't talking about your Aegon. He didn't actually want Aegon to rule. Um, and Allison's like, it's too late. There's been a mistake. This is how it is. And you see kind of a steel resolve go across Renera's face that, okay, now it's time to battle. It's time to loose the dragons. And it looks like that's what we're getting next week. We're about to get things to come to a head. I feel like I've said this the last two episodes after the previews, um, but it looks like this next week we're going to get people lining up in the Riverlands. We're going to have a bag in Baggins. For hobbits. Um, we're going to have a battle. We're going to have dragons clashing. So that's what we're coming out with. Uh, yeah. And that does it for this episode of House of the Dragon. I thought it was really good. I thought it was a good uh, setup episode too. The dialogue and the conversation between... Rhaenyra and Alicent in the Sept, I thought was fantastic. Really enjoyed this episode. I'm enjoying this season so far, and I do really want to go back and rewatch season one um, before I finish this season, just so I have everything so fresh in my mind. Because a lot of the stuff like Lena's death, I remember that she's in grief after losing her baby, and she just lets Vagar torture. Um, and so I need to rewatch it, but this has been a great season so far. We're only three episodes in. We got seven left, so we're ready to buckle up. I need to leave for work now, so I will be recording the rest of this about the recaps of the musical part after work. So, later. And we're back. It was a work day down, and now time for some musical recap. But one thing I did think of that I forgot to mention in the Game of Thrones recap is that they updated the credits. The tapestry has changed, including Jaehaerys being beheaded on the funeral procession with blood threads going across the throat. A bit excessive, but we also had the rat catchers hanging too, so we did that. So now that closes out the House of the Dragon episode three of season two recap so we're episode 203 yes they they display it on hbo so now this is coming out july 3rd we have some american musicals available to stream uh some we've talked about some we haven't the most obvious one is hamilton uh lin-manuel miranda's musical about alexander hamilton um and kind of the founding of america as it were uh streaming disney plus and that has been out for a while. It was the second musical that Rayleigh and I reviewed on here. And so there is an old episode on that. You check it out. It's one of our first longer ones on streaming uh, on YouTube. It's the full episode on podcast platforms is split into two. So just a heads up if you're going to check that out. Um, that is one of my favorites. We talked about it on the episode. I don't love Lin-Manuel Miranda's performance. But as for the musical itself, I don't know why my... Um, camera is not focused right now uh, if you're watching on youtube apologies as for the music itself though and how cleverly is executed and written 
one of the best there is. It is very hard to top that one. So check out Hamilton if you haven't already. Good thing to watch on the 4th of July. Throw on with the family. It's censored, so you only get one of the F-bombs on it. And they even do a censored one. They take out the best one. One of my uh, common um, complaints with that movie. Uh, also, you have 1776, the older musical about the Continental Congress and the writing of the Declaration of Independence that focuses primarily on John Adams, but they also have Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, and just kind of their debates in the Congress and how much of a little bit of a pain in the ass John Adams was in the game, the Declaration actually written and the vote on independence. So this is streaming on Tubi. It won a bunch of awards. The movie version, I should say, that's based on the musical. I'm not sure all the differences. Didn't have time to dive into it. Eventually, we'll get to a review on that. So stay tuned. But that is streaming on Tubi for your pleasure. Um, another one that is not streaming anywhere is Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson, which posits, what if Andrew Jackson were an emo rock star? And this one had a lot of mixed reviews. It did not have a very long Broadway run. It was off Broadway for a while. Didn't really tour. It stars Benjamin Walker um, as Andrew Jackson, who played Abraham Lincoln in Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Fun fact. Um, but it has one of my favorite songs from a American musical, and that's a rock star on it. Fantastic. Uh, the cast album is streaming on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you listen to that. You can find some film versions of those performances on YouTube as well. Of course, you got the slime tutorial uh, bootleg version. So uh, there's a number of other ones on Broadway HD that I haven't had a chance to watch um, is Allegiance, which is inspired by George Takei's or Takei's real life experiences as Leah Salonga and as well. Um, I've heard it had great reviews. It's on Broadway HD to stream. Uh, and so there's also ones that take place of good old Americana, like Oklahoma and things like that. But the main ones that are focusing around this time of our patriotic spirit uh, for the 4th of July would be Hamilton 77, 1776. So feel free to check those out. And in musical news, um, Wicked, the first part, which they still are not advertising as a part one, even though um, it's been said in interviews that it is still part one of two, uh, but it moved up a week, so it is now releasing on November 22nd. So it's now opening the same time as Gladiator 2, which got our first look of images from that. Pedro Pascal, people are swooning over him in the role in the first release images. So Gladiator 2 and Wicked coming out November 22nd now. People are saying it might be the next Barbenheimer. We might get Gladiator and Wicked. You do the back-to-back -back feature. So that's going to do it for this week's episode. Stay tuned for either Brad and I reviewing Wish or another House of the Dragon review. Um, it's always a crapshoot what you're going to get. Appreciate all you guys who are sticking around for the ride. Um, YouTube numbers fluctuate, and pod listeners don't really get accurate reporting on that. But appreciate everyone who has been with us um, through the ups and downs, the different iterations of the podcast, what it's looked like. Appreciate you all. Thank you for always following, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, all that fun stuff. As always, don't forget to go down once more. Have a fantastic fourth. Later. Later.